Are you ready to go? Rory, is this, I know, is this, is this on YouTube? This is, we got a YouTube channel, right? Okay, okay. Okay, um, we acknowledge that, that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. Call to order. So we have one item, oh, first I should ask, any declarations of conflict of interest? I know, Councillor Duran, are you online? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillors McCabe, Councillor McCabe and Deputy Mayor Yankov could not be present, so uh, we have eight in the chamber. So number three, um, well, I'll repeat, any declarations of conflict? Conflict of interest? None. Approval of agenda. There's one item. Presentation resolutions. Presentation, presentation of the Char City of Charlottetown 2425 capital and operational budgets and associated associated resolutions. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, second by Councillor McKinnon. All those in favor? Councillor Drawn? In favor. Okay, and I am going to turn it over to Councillor. John McAleer, who is the chair of standing committee for uh, finance and administration, and he has some remarks to make about the budget, and our CAO, Eleanor, will follow with the resolutions. Councillor McAleer. Good afternoon, Your Worship and fellow councillors. City senior leadership and staff, and to everyone who is joining us uh, today in person and online. It's my pleasure as chair of the Finance Audit, Tendering, and Administration Committee to present the 2024-2025 budget for the City of Charlottetown. Your Worship, the balanced capital and operational budgets before you present a solid financial plan for Charlottetown. One that touches all services and programs with a focus on growth, yet maintains careful and planned spending. But before I speak to the investments we're making, I'd like to take a moment to talk about how we got here. This year's, bud this year's budget process has been a little bit different to any other we've gone through. It's been the most transparent one we've engaged in as a city. Every meeting was held in an open session and live streamed to our YouTube channel. Every debate, every question, every priority was brought to the forefront for public consumption. Taxpayers following us on YouTube watched a realistic approach to planning the next fiscal year. Live and as it happened. I'd like to recognize Eleanor Mohammed, our Chief Administrative Officer, and Betty French, our Finance Manager, who started work on this budget along with the department heads and their respective staff and the worker bees way back in the fall of 2023. Part of that work included two days of budget workshops, which were open to the public and live streamed. Members of council, along with senior city staff, met to identify a strategic direction and set clear priorities for the upcoming budget. We also used that opportunity to hear from some of our community partners. We were fortunate to have the community survey results to provide an in-depth review of what our community priorities combined with what we heard through conversations with residents. We were prepared for the weeks of discussions and reviews that budgets always bring. Of course, Dan Jenkins, our, um, our new Chief Financial Officer, joined us in January as the process was really gaining momentum. And he jumped headfirst into refining and streamlining streamlining the process. This resulted in some new budget procedures, incorporating the in impacts of forecasts and global economic trends, 
on the plan projects and initiatives we can realistically complete during the fiscal year. As we look ahead, we can't escape the fact that Charlottetown continues to grow. We're excited for the opportunities growth brings, but mindful of the investment required. To maintain, update, and build new infrastructure, to improve our facilities, and to increase services. We know this budget had to reflect the community's focus on, on increasing their feelings of safety. And so, policing features prominently. It also contains a small increase in water and sewer charges to help maintain our infrastructure and defray rising operational costs. As you look through this budget book, I'm confident that you'll see an appropriate balance in addressing urgent capital and operational needs. That balance is the result of months of hard work. The figures tell the story of a strategic approach to prioritizing projects and initiatives to be prudent and responsible while enabling ongoing investments to continue sustainably preparing for the growth of our city and maintaining the excellent quality of life residents to serve. Now, what you've been waiting for, some numbers. Uh, council approved a $55.2 million for the net city and capital expenses, city and utility capital expenses. This money will fund different types of new infrastructure costs across our city, and I'll explain more of that in a moment. <clears throat> We're also investing $102,234,000 as total city and utility operating expenditures to fund the people who keep our city operating and the infrastructure we currently have in place. Altogether, the city of Charlottetown and the water and sewer utility will have a projected $157,479,000 spend for the 2024-2025 fiscal year. Some of the highlights I'd like to point out for you include significant investment in our protective and emergency services. In addition to the six full-time police officers we approved earlier this year, Charlottetown Police Service Services now have funding to hire another five officers and invest in a mobile critical incident command to make sure our police are better prepared for any and all incidents. Charlottetown Fire Department will be supported by two new supervisors and, uh, and will upgrade their equipment, including a new fast rescue craft to improve their water rescue capabilities and help our residents feel safe in all of their activities on land and on the water. Our, far, our firefighters will, be, will also be protected by new self-contained oxygen tanks to help them breathe while fighting fires. When considering emergency measures, operation responsibilities, council also look to the future of all residents. When we, when we approved investing in generators and other pieces of equipment. To be, to be dedicated to specific reception centers. Should we be hit with another emergency like Fiona will be better prepared to appropriately welcome and care for our residents. Another of our priorities is to effectively manage the growth of our beautiful city. Part of that is through maintaining and building new streets and sidewalks, and active transportation pathways to lead the way for predicted development. The Eastern Gateway project is underway and we've already begun improving the stormwater drainage along Water Street. In this, joint, in, this, in, in this joint project with the province, we'll also be changing the route people take to enter our city and making it a bit more efficient. Another part of managing growth is improving our public transit system. 
We'll be going to tender later this year to start the design build of a new transit depot with three maintenance bays and 19 storage and charging bays to house the new electric buses we'll be riding over the coming years. While we grow, we want to maintain that community feeling we all love. And so we want to continue to connect people. Let them choose their best mode of transportation. And let's not forget the lifestyle we're so lucky to have in Charlottetown. We're continuing to invest in the new Simmons Multi-Sport and Recreation Center. And pretty much everyone I know is excited for this state-of-the-art facility and the healthy, active living opportunities it's going to bring us all. Don't forget the events our city is becoming world famous for hosting. Two new events that we're really happy to support will happen later this fall. At the beginning of October, we'll host the Hearing Life Tour Challenge as part of the Grand Slam of Curling for the first time. Wow. This event will bring 64 teams of world-class curlers to our city to, to play in the Bell Alliance Center. And at the end of October, we'll host the Spoho X Experience, where we're not just investing in the event, but also in the future of Charlottetown as an event destination. The Spoho Experience is for sport hosting industry professionals. And we'll be welcoming them all to see what we have to offer. I'm confident we'll be welcoming many of them back. For the past several weeks, Council has been faced with difficult decision making. I sincerely thank all members of Council for their thoughtful deliberation and debate and the slug through our meetings <laughs> and their dedication to finalizing this budget. Thank you. I also thank senior leadership and all staff for their work and advice in the budget preparation process. Your, imp your information, input, and expertise helped guide Council's discussions and was invaluable to the process. These budgets present a sound financial plan for our city, ensuring our residents have the services and programs they need and deserve, maintaining our strong financial position and keeping us on the path of sustained and strategic growth. It's a budget that's right for Charlottetown and I'm optimistic for the year ahead and everything we plan to achieve. And before I go to the adoption of this, I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to make a special thank, a note to uh, Janice Fogarty, full disclosure, who uh, our comms senior communications officer, who uh, helped craft and prepare me and present in the presentation of this budget. Thank you. Your Worship, I move the adoption of the City of Charlottetown's 2024-2025 financial plan. Thank you, Councillor John McAleer. Moved by Councillor McAleer, do I have a seconder? Councillor Matard. So the resolution's on the floor to adopt. Uh, you have the resolution? Uh, well, okay, well, she can read it aloud. Okay. You wanna read that first one? Please. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor McAleer, seconded uh, by Councillor Beck. Be it resolved that the 2024-2025 City of Charlottetown operational budget, as presented by Councillor John McAleer, Chair of Finance, Audit, Tendering, and Administration Committee, be approved, and that the 2024-2025 Charlottetown Water and Sewer Corporation operational budget, as presented by John 
by Councillor John McLear, Chair of Finance, Audit, Tendering, and Administration Committee be approved. Questions called? Oh, no, just one second. Councillor McLear. Councillor McLear, do you want to take a seat? Okay. Be part of the discussion. Okay. Councillor Twill. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the chair of planning, or chair of uh, finance, for bringing in today's budget. Um, all during the process, I asked myself some fundamental questions with respect to this budget. Is this budget fair and equal to the neighborhoods and communities across this city? Is the work in progress continuing on so that people in the respective neighborhoods and communities across the city of Charlottetown can actually see their tax dollars working for them? Besides that, I looked at the, the process itself. Um, when we looked at the so-called new initiatives, reference was made to the KP, KPMG report. And in our first meeting, it was discovered that the KPMG report was not adopted, approved, or even received by City Council. So I'm not sure why we cherry-picked the KPMG report. Capital projects. As the Chair mentioned, and you're right, this was the first time that meetings were held in a public forum. So transparency, I think, is, uh, is, 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 is indispensable to gaining the public's confidence. So they can watch the deliberations and the discussions that do take place here in the City Council Chambers. But when it came time to hacking and slashing the capital projects, from a senior management perspective, those meetings were held behind closed doors. So the question is why? Why were those meetings held behind closed doors and then thrown at us so we got to fight it out over the scraps? Why weren't those meetings held in an open forum? It's taxpayers' dollars. The residents have a right to see what projects are being rejected by senior management and the managers of each one of these departments? Why weren't those meetings held in a public forum? And what's the rationale for cutting these particular projects? So I see some inconsistencies when it comes to being open and transparent. When we were going through the capital projects, for example, police, guns and gangs, Chief of Police referenced that. I asked some questions. I wanted to get into some of the uh, concerns that I had. I was cut off. No, we, we can't discuss that, even though it was a line item in the budget that the Chief of Police presented to this council. Um, I, I, again, I go back to equality and fairness. and something that's near and dear to my heart are recreational facilities. So in each neighborhood, each community, each ward, can look out and say, all right, we didn't get our facility this year, whether it's the outdoor rinks that has been prevalent in the suburban communities, and next year could be our turn. But this year, in our Parks and Recreation budget, the committee submitted two. Manager come in, recommend that they be cut and slashed. I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it. And you talk about infrastructure, uh, you know, street paving, uh, sidewalks. When, when, the, when, the, when the projects were recommended by, account, by management initially, there, there were no projects. There, were, there was no money allotted. Council had to fight it out to bring it and put it back into the budget. So um, again, I asked the question, is this budget truly reflective and fair to all other neighborhoods and communities across this city. I don't believe it is. So again, I want to thank you for bringing down the budget. I know it's been a struggle. You said earlier, you talked about, you know, this is a transitional budget. I, I see disparity. I see discrepancy. And I see unfairness. And I don't believe 
That is too much to ask. I really don't. That's what we're elected for. We're elected to represent our constituents, to bring their recommendations to the table so that they can say and look right across the board, you know what, progress is being made across the board. Okay. And in this particular, uh, this particular budget, I submit to the citizens of this community, I don't believe it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council McLear, I would just like to add what you stated. I want to give a huge thank you to staff, departmental managers, and our upper management for their input and feedback on budget 2024-25. The process began, as you said, back in November 2023. And I'm furthermore a big shout out to council members for their engagement during lively discussions and debates that were live streamed for the first time on our YouTube channel. Now, just one thing to keep in mind, all the pertinent document, documents presented are available to the public. So quite frankly, I believe we conducted these discussions in a professional and respectful manner, and I applaud all of you for that. And in closing, I want to warn you to stay tuned for more to come. Happy Easter. Joyce Buck. Okay. Councilor Mackler, do you want to respond or do you want to? No, I mean, uh, Councilor Twill, I mean, he, you know, he, he shared his, shared his uh, comments and advice. He's, you know, he's good at doing that. So, uh, the, you know, as for the, you know, as for the process, I'll defer maybe to CAO on there as, as, as it relates to, I guess, the process and how the staff, uh, uh, I mean, we, they, uh, they they have to uh, do the work. We have to trust that uh, the staff are identifying um, in the budgeting process, uh, be it on the operation or the capital side, uh, what the needs you know you know what the needs are, and then uh, you know they, they come as recommendations to you know to us and uh, through the committee, and then ultimately to council. And um, uh, you know, it's um, you know, I, I don't know if uh, it's a process that can ever be perfect, but uh, can it be improved? Yeah, yeah, there's always room for improvement. If if there's not, there's uh, you must be doing something wrong. But uh, that, that's all I got to say. Thanks. CEO Eleanor Mahad. Thank you, Worship. So I'd like to remind uh, elected members here today that in this chambers and outside of this chambers, you adhere to a code of conduct bylaw, and most specifically in the commentary that was just made two sections of that bylaw are relevant. First is 20.2. Members of council must not make public statements attacking or reflecting negatively on the city of Charlottetown, other members, city staff, or invoke staff matter matters for political purposes. The second one is 22.2. Members of council shall be respectful of the staff's role to advise based on political neutrality and objectivity without undue influence from any individual member or faction of the council. Our role as administration is to advise council and make recommendations. The administration of this municipality has done exactly that. We had to make decisions for cuts to budget. Those cuts were brought before council to be publicly debated. It was within proper governance, transparency, and with accountability. And I will leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Question was called. Yes, Question was called. All those in favor of resolution number one, moved by Councillor McAleer, second by Councillor Beck, please raise your hand. Okay. Councillors Beck, McKinnon, uh, McTart, Ramsey, McAleer, and uh, Bernard. Councillor Duran, yay or nay? Not in favor. In favor? Not. Not in, in favor. favor. Okay. Councillor, councillors against, please raise your hand. Councillor Tweel and Councillor Duran. And just make note that both the Councillor McCabe and Deputy Mayor uh, Yankov are not present. Okay. Resolution number two. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor McLear, seconded by Councillor Beck. Be it resolved that uh, a municipal tax rate of 67 cents per $100 of assessment be levied against 
all non-commercial property in the city of Charlottetown for a period of January 1st, 2024 to December 31st, 2024, as per the provisions of the Real Property Act, save and accept one, the non-commercial component of property which is owned by non-resident person or non-resident corporation, where the municipal tax rate shall be $1.33 per $100 of assessment, the non-commercial component of hotels and motels, where the municipal tax rate shall be a 91 cents per $100 of assessment, where the owner is a resident person or a resident corporation, or B, $1.57 per $100 of assessment, where the owner is a non-resident person or a non-resident corporation. Three, the non-commercial component of apartment buildings containing four or more units where the municipal tax rate shall be A, 91 cents per $100 of assessment where the owner is a resident person or a resident corporation, or B, $1.57 per $100 of assessments where the owner is a non-resident person or a non-resident corporation. For the non-commercial component of properties located in the Parkwood Estates in Riverview Estates Mobile Home Parks where the municipal tax rate shall be A, 42 cents per $100 of assessments where the owner is a resident person or a resident corporation, or B, $1.08 um, $1 per $100 of assessment, where the owner is a non-resident person or a non-resident corporation. For the purposes of this resolution, non-resident person and non-resident corporation applies to property owners as described in Section 24 of the Real Property Tax Act Regulation. Therefore, be it resolved that a municipal tax rate of $2.36 per $100 of assessment be levied against all commercial property located in the city of Charlottetown for a period of January 1st, 2024 to December 31st, 2024, as per the provisions of the Real Property Tax Act. And be it further resolved that the city of Charlottetown request the province of PEI to collect an additional 18 cents per $100 of assessment on all commercial properties within the business improvement area as per the attached map for the period of January 1st, 2024 to December 31st, 2024. The monies collected from this shall be transferred to the Downtown Charlottetown Incorporated for the purpose of marketing and enhancing the downtown core of the city of Charlottetown. Moved we'll by Councillor Ma McLear, Councillor McLear, second by Councillor Beck. Question? No. Question called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, Councillor Beck, McKinnon. I have to put this on the public record. Councillor McTurt, Ramsey, McLear, and Bernard in favor against. Councillor Duran, Councillor Duran, yay or nay? Not in favor. Not in favor. Okay, six to two. You have the next one there. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor MacLear, seconded by Councillor Beck. Be it resolved that the Charlottetown Water and Sewer Corporation, Water Sewer, and Combined Water and Sewer Rates and Fees Effective April 1st, 2024, as detailed on the attached rate schedule, be approved. Can I speak to this? You're on. Mayor Brown? Yes, Councillor Strong, can you hear me? Councilor Duran, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So you want to speak can to me? Do you want to speak to him? Yes. Her? Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. Um, you know, as chair of Modern Sewer, uh, you know, I, I know we talked about a slight increase. I know when we came to budget time, I didn't want to put an increase uh, on for the Water and Sewer. Um, you know, uh, it, it was turned down. Uh, council wanted to put it in there for infrastructure. So I, I don't know if, if this increase is all of it going to infrastructure. Is, is that my, you know, is it a recommendation that all the all the increase is going straightly into infrastructure? Can someone answer that for me? OK, we do have Josh McGinnis here. Um, do we have the manager? He's not in town. Okay. Josh, are you able to provide some enlightenment? Councillor Duran, Josh McGinnis, 
is going to answer the question. He's the assistant uh, manager. Sure. Yeah. A any other question? Because um, it's two questions. Do you have anything else to add to that, or is that all you want to ask? No, that's that's good. I just want a clarification on that. During the budget uh, release, it was said that you know we're increasing the rate, so the uh, money could go to infrastructure. So I'm just want to want a clarification on that. Is it just all going strictly to infrastructure? Mr. Josh McInnes. Thank you. Um, so the the main component is towards infrastructure, but there will be an element of that that is assisting with the increasing cost of operation. Did you hear that, Councillor Duran? Yes, I did, uh, Mayor Brown, and, and I appreciate that. I, I just know that we have a surplus this year, and I was against this, so uh, I, I I thank Josh for, for his explanation, but I, I can't support this, but thank you. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Thank you very much. Give Richard our regards. Okay. Um, question? Oh, thank you, Councillor Ramsey. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councillors Beck, McKinnon, Matert, Ramsey, McAleer, and Bernard. Councillors against? Councillor Tweel, Councillor Dron, yay or nay? Against. Okay. Thank you. Nay. Okay, thank you. Do you have another resolution there? Moved by Councillor McAleer, seconded by Councillor Beck. Be it resolved that the 2024-2025 City of Charlottetown Capital Budget, as presented by Councillor John McAleer, Chair of Finance, Audit, Tendering, and Administration Committee, be approved, and that the 2024-2025 Charlottetown Water and Sewer Corporation Capital Budget, as presented by Councillor John McAleer, Chair of Finance, Audit, Tendering, and Administration Committee be approved. And further, that staff be authorized to tender projects and long-term debt associated with the Capital Expenditure Program. Okay, Councilor Tweet, no, Councilor Tweet's got his, go, oh, Councilor Tweet, could you please stand up? Thank you. Thank you, A question for the CAO. There was much discussion here with regards to the six police officers that were committed by the provincial government to uh, effectively provide safety and security for the residents down on Park Street, Beach Street, and the surrounding community. I made uh, several recommendations for a memorandum of understanding for the commitment, financial commitment on behalf of the provincial government. Can you please tell the community, um, has that commitment been made financially, and do we have that in writing? Okay. Councilor Quayle. This, I believe, is for the capital budget. Well, Correct? Sir. No, I, I just, I just, is, Dan, is this the resolution for capital? This is to buy goods, to build infrastructure. Um, the operational deals with the police officers. So that's when it should have been asked. That's, well, and no, no, I, but th we're this, the, no, I know, but, final but, but there, it's we're, just a simple question. I know, All but, CAO well, yeah, to do is no, we, we didn't get the, the chief to answer, but I'm just trying to clarify that we have two budgets. Just want, just want the this is the first time when we have had operational and co capital come together. In the past, we did them separately. This time around, we met back in November 23rd and 24th, well, and, we, and we knew the, the direction we were going in. So questions. I would say that the chief or the CAO can respond to you at a later date. Right now, the question now, not now, because it's capital budget. Well, okay. that, that's really unfortunate, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Okay. So the. Question uh, is relating to capital budget. Is a question. Can I ask a question? Go, Can I ask a question? Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, in the capital budget process, we, we had put money aside for a potential uh, capital project with the um, uh, Confederation Center, which may or not have happened. Is that in the capital budget as a line item in case we? We decide to go a certain way. I know we didn't discuss it, um, you know, but I'm just wondering about the capital budget. Uh, concerns came up when we were doing the capital budget that we found other years, previous years, there were items not uh, accounted for. So, you know, which was a surprise to me. Um, I'm just wondering, 
are, are we going to look at the previous capital projects or the projects that weren't looked at or completed in the last few years? Or are we just going on with a new budget and just looking at the new items? So that, that that's what I, I know we never decided on grants yet. So is that a, a item that we have a certain amount in the budget and then we'll we'll determine what the grants are after that? So can someone clarify yeah. that, please? So is is that the totality of your question? Anything yes, else you want to add to that? No, that's great. Thank okay. you. So just as for the grants, uh, you as a member at large on the uh, Standing Committee for Finance and Administration, that will come up after we'll discuss that at uh, our Standing Committee meeting and then make those recommendations to Council on grants and the agreements. So that's fourth, that'll be coming up, I believe, at the next Standing Committee meeting. Uh, Councillor McAleer, can you add to that or also um, address his question regarding the capital budget uh, regarding some of the issues he's brought to the floor? Thank you, uh, Mayor Brown. Uh, well, just concur uh, what you said on the grant process and that's how it'll be handled. Uh, as for Councillor Drong's uh, clarity on the uh, Confederation piece, I think I'll defer that to uh, to our CFO, uh, Dan Jenkins, if you would. Yeah. Thank you. So, Councillor Drawn, uh, Dan Jenkins, the uh, Director of Finance Administration, is going to address it. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Your Worship, through to Councillor Drawn. So there, there was an amount included in the capital budget for the Confederation Center project. Um, there was no discussion uh, at Council in terms of the detail of that project because it is very much uh, a concept that uh, needs to be flushed out with the Board of Management at the Confederation Centre uh, before we have really anything to discuss. Um, but it does relate to their request for funding for their capital project to redevelop the library um, premises. And um, the, uh, the initial ask was there were some challenges with that. Um, so in consultation with the Chief Financial Officer uh, at the Confederation Centre, uh, we, we have explored some other possibilities and we'll be taking that um, back to Council uh, for full, full discussion and deliberation uh, when, when we have some more, some more details. So no decision made on it, uh, but there was an, uh, an allocation made in the budget, but uh, there would be no spend on that until it came to Council for, for full discussion and, and decision. And Councilor Duran, uh, you recall yes. that I did mention that it involves uh, negotiations that would fall under Section 119, uh, subsection, I don't know if it's 1H, but um, Dan might be able to find it. That will go into a closed session, and then if that materializes into something, uh, we'll see a path forward. Any clarification thank, thank required? You. Well, yeah, I just didn't know if that was going to be included in the budget as an item that you know, do we have to come back and and expand the budget, or is that a line item in it? Um, you know, it's the same as the uh, the grants. Are we going with a certain uh, level of, of grant, like let's just say ten dollars, and then we 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 have that in the budget, and we're not to go over that? Is that my understanding? Okay, uh, I'm going to get Dan to just to clarify that, but I think you already sent out. Or where's Betty? I think Betty already set out, sent out a template on what's being proposed, but those proposals will be uh, flushed out at our next standing committee meeting for finance administration. Dan, do you want to add, or or Betty? Uh, certainly, yes. I, I, your Worship, through to Councillor Drawn, I can concur that 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 in fact is the case. Um, and, and that the deliberations on the um, uh, grants would, would happen uh, at the next next meeting or, or uh, a, a meeting in the near future. Um, the other point, uh, the other question uh, I neglected to answer for, for uh, Councillor Duran was the um, projects that haven't been moved forward in this fiscal year. Um, no, certainly those are still uh, under consideration, um, but what we have included in this year's budget are the projects 
projects that we um, believe that can be completed or at least initiated and, and the money spent this year. So we didn't want to um, overstate what we um, felt we could accomplish this year. If we look back at the 23-24 capital budget, it was a very uh, ambitious budget um, and we, we were only able to accomplish about 30% uh, of the projects that we, that we set out to, to complete. Um, so the, uh, the, 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 those projects are, uh, still have uh, great merit and, and will continue to be uh, uh, discussed and hopefully move forward in, in the future as, as Council determines those priorities. Councillor Ron. Well, thank you, and, and thanks for that clarification, Danny. I, it just, you know, I know we're, we're, we're here trying to approve a budget, and I know there's a lot of work by all council and, and staff did a great job trying to do their best, but it just, this one kind of gets me again is, is, you know, we passed a budget last year. As you stated, 30% was looked at, and now there's 70% that's just kind of vanished, that we have no real uh, appetite to go back and do that. We're on to a new year and a new budget. It's been a learning curve for me myself because I just thought last year we passed the budget and, and then that was going to be done. Those projects were going to be looked at. So sitting here, coming back up to this budget process and finding them that they weren't concluded, um, it, it was kind of a shock to me. So. You know, I, I know we have a whole new administration in here and we're, we're trying to do a good job. It's just, you know, it was shocking at that time. And, and uh, you know, I, I just hope that we can go forward, that if we put it in a budget, those items which, which we pass, they're going to be looked at before any other ones. Yep. But I, you know, I, I'm not going to go on about it. I appreciate the time, Mayor Brown, and, and the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councilor Twilio, second question. Got budget. Just a question for uh, Danny. Uh, you talked about the capital projects and having them completed. Um, if the capital projects would have been submitted to the public back in back in January, do you think there would have been much more of an opportunity to have a number of these projects and the ones that didn't make didn't make the grade? Um, have these projects completed. Like that was the norm the last few years to have these projects submitted much earlier than, you know, towards the end of, uh, towards the end of, uh, the end of March. Now we're competing with the provincial government. A lot of their, a lot of their capital projects and requests for proposals and tendering processes are already in play. And we're behind the eight ball. So, um, you know, that was an, another major concern that I had was uh, delaying the capital projects to, to March. And I question the motivation for that, as opposed to, uh, you know, the committees, standing committees submitted their capital projects to the finance committee. And then for some reason, you know, week after week after week went by, there was no discussions, there was no deliberations. And then, you know, we're forced into a squeeze play. And I, I I question that. I really do. We, we, we were on a train of thought that, you know, our capital projects would be submitted out the door for better pricing mm -hmm. in, in January. So yeah. I'm like Councillor Ron, you know, a lot of these projects didn't make the grade, even with record and growth development in this city. I mean, it, it just amazes me. Um, the picture that was painted, as I said earlier, uh, you know, doom and gloom, yet we have record growth and development in this city. I, I, it doesn't add up. It really doesn't. Councilor McClear, do you want to just defer that to Dan or? Yeah, Dan, um, if, you, if you would, um, uh, I know it's pretty clear. Uh, you know, in your head and, and part of the process that you've been steering us on. Perhaps if you could maybe just uh, context that uh, that uh, budgeting piece, the gap piece, and just to kind of um, put that in perspective, and it may uh, it may uh, shed some, um, I guess, uh, context for what Councillor Tweel is, uh, I guess, how he's presenting it, and maybe it might make it more clear to 
certainly those that are listening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McLear, through your worship to Councillor Trill. So yes, yeah, certainly the, the gap between you know what we had hoped to spend on capital projects and, and what we were able to do because of capacity issues or um, the ability to find contractors, that kind of thing is, has been, has been a, a challenge. And really, we wanted to be more uh, clear in terms of uh, what management felt in consultation with their staff and contractors and so on could actually be um, completed or, or delivered on. Um, in terms of the timing of getting capital projects approved, um, I agree with you. It's it's uh, beneficial in terms of contractors planning and, and pricing contracts to get those out um, as soon as they can, as soon as we can, um, so that uh, we don't we're not last minute and and all the capacities booked up. Um, it is the wish of uh, the administration to look at capital projects as an ongoing continuous process of, of looking at projects, evaluating them, approving the projects, and then looking into uh, you know the, the year we're in, the next year, and the next year to look at when the optimal time to, to pull, the, pull the trigger on those projects is. So the hope would be that um, the Confederation Center project would be would be an example where we may be able to revisit that in the middle of the fiscal year, uh, depending on you know the the value of the of the uh, project and the proposal. And there may be, you know, there may not be trade offs involved, but there may be trade offs involved as well. So. Um, it would be our preference to, you know, to have the capital um, budgeting and capital project discussion ongoing, as opposed to just a, a snippet in time coming towards the end of the fiscal year. Um, so we, we 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 certainly hear your your point and agree that it would be beneficial to to get those um, approved and planned well in advance of construction season. Councillor Tweel, duly noted, uh, because uh, I had some concerns, so did some other councillors, so we'll be doing a quick review after this budget about how we proceed in the future on capital budgets. But I can give uh, the our Director of Finance Administration credit that he's now looking at how to debt service our capital debt. I don't think we always took that into consideration in past budgets, so this is a good path forward that we know how much we have to set aside to debt service uh, any debt that we incur. Question? Questions, Carl. All those in favor, please raise your hand. <coughs> Councillor Drawn, yay or nay? Nay. Councillor Twill, yay you. or nay? No. Okay. Councillors Beck, McKinnon, Bernard, McAleer, Ramsey, and Matard in favor. 6 2. Do we have another? Any more resolutions? Nope. That's it. Well, we're going to adjourn shortly, but I do want to wish you all a happy Easter. On dit en français, joyeuse Pâques à vous et vos familles. Happy Easter to you and your family. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, second by Councillor McKinnon. All those in favor?